for though, what I do want to point out on the screen is just, it's going to be kind of key to you guys is a bottom little clip. It's about working with a, a mortgage bank. So we're a mortgage bank, but more than that, we're a correspondent lender. So what we do is we underwrite and fund loans for, well, we underwrite and fund loans in our, in our own name. But ultimately what we're doing is we're funding loans on lines of credit we have with like Bank of America, Chase, GMAC, Wells Fargo. And we also broker out to a number of different uh, banks cool thing there is is you know if we run into an underwriting guideline issue with with one of the lenders we can usually switch to another one and try to make it work if it fits within general guidelines um, I talked to you guys about it a little bit in a little bit of detail about um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac so most lenders are underwriting their loans to Fetty, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae's guidelines what that does is it kind of you know it creates a pretty just a box that not everybody can fit in so the cool thing about having uh, different options with the brokered part of the business is if we've got a, a broker relationship with, let's say, Union Bank of California or Connect to Credit Union or somebody else, maybe they've got a product that we can offer that the banks just don't. So obviously you guys have seen this, the pre-approval, loan approval, and closing. Pre-approval is kind of the key point or a key part, I think, because it gives us a chance to look at your income, assets, credit, and kind of identify a a loan program that'll work for you. Um, in your case, being self-employed, that's definitely you know something that we're to identify right away. Um, a lot of times, we'll see clients; they'll think they're pre-approved. They haven't actually talked to anybody. They just know, hey, I make this amount of money every year, and I could afford this payment. The reality is, is what we're looking at nowadays is completely different than what we were looking at a few years ago. Um, one of the big things is going to be tax returns. You know, the tax returns are such a key part of qualifying someone. You know, in the past I just asked for, uh, you know, pay stubs, bank statements, W-2s, and we could pretty much do the loan based on that. Nowadays, they're pulling a 4506-Ts on all loans. What a 4506-T is, is it's a tax transcript. So if someone's W-2s show that they make $100,000 a year, and then we pull their 4506-T and it shows that they make $60,000 a year, will have an issue and the reason why that comes up is because maybe they have a um, internet business or maybe they're a real estate agent on the side and they're writing off forty thousand dollars a year in income so they're qualifying less well, we can only use what their actual taxable income is or their adjusted gross income um, why be pre-approved well you know basically determines what you can afford prior to looking it also tells a seller that you're a qualified buyer you know, a lot of buyers and a lot of agents won't even, um, they won't look at a contract or accept a contract unless they see a pre-approval. Um, more so than that, you know, I've worked with uh, a couple of larger lenders as an REO loan officer. So a lot of the uh, properties that were on the market for the last couple of years have been REOs. Now it's more short sale mix, but with the REOs, usually they're gonna ask for a, pre-approval letter from their bank. So if it's a Wells Fargo bank-owned property, they're going to want to see that a Wells Fargo loan officer has done a pre-approval on that. So what I advise my clients to do and what I'll do for them is when I meet with them, I'll take a copy of all their supporting documents. So I'll create a stacking uh, order of their pre-approval, loan application, credit report, supporting documents, and give it back to them. So if you're out looking at property on a Saturday or Sunday with Steve, you want to get your offer in for Monday morning, but hey, you need to get pre-approved with Wells Fargo first. Will you can just fax all your information in or email it over to them? Some clients have hangups about uh, providing their documents to multiple loan officers. I completely get it. I'm a private person. Unfortunately, that's where we are right now. I do not recommend uh, having your credit report pulled multiple times because it will eventually damage your credit score. Now, if you've got a 780 FICO score and you pull it three times, is it going to bring it down to a 620? No. But if you have a copy of the credit report and it's recent, just provide it. So you're going to want to you know, get a copy of a, a recent one. Uh, the budget, guarding against being house rich and cash poor, that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, VA loans and FHA loans are some of the loan programs that will allow you to do this. Go figure. What they'll do is they'll allow you to go to a higher debt to income ratio. VA, for example, allow you to do a residual income. So they'll only need you to have an extra $700 at the end of the month so you could pay you know, for insurance and everything else. 
Typically, what we're looking at is about a 45% debt to income ratio as a maximum that you know, I like to see. LP or Freddie Mac will allow us to go up to 50%, but you really have to take into consideration if you're at 50% before taxes, you know, what you're, where you're going to be at. Um, remembering closing costs, taxes, and insurance, this is definitely a biggie. If you're looking at making an offer on a $300,000 property and you're putting 20% down and you've got $60,000 in the bank, maybe you don't want to put 20% down. Maybe you want to put 10% down or 15. Keep a little bit extra in the bank to cover closing costs, taxes, insurance, or ask the seller to pay for a closing cost credit. Um, how much home can you afford? Well, definitely you want to take a look at everything that's involved including the taxes, homeowner's insurance, HOA fees, and other fees like your uh, CFDs, your Mella Roos. We talked about Rancho Bernardo and Forest Ranch. Typically in San Diego County, we're at about 1.25% property tax. That's what we use to qualify people. But on occasion, it'll be 1.65, 1.75. You need to know that because that's a big difference on a $500,000 house. Again, the 45% debt to income ratio. You want to look at long-term debt. Um, what we're looking at is income, assets, credit, and other. When you're self-employed, we're looking at, uh, you're going to look at your last two years tax returns, and we're also going to look at your year-to-date profit and loss. If you have declining income from last year, they're going to go up the most conservative income out there. So you don't want to have declining income if you can avoid it. Uh, You know, you really have to, you'd have to get a, a letter stating that. You'd want to write a letter of explanation. Letters of explanation are great. Make them short, though, and sweet. One paragraph. Don't write a book. Nobody's going to read it. But if you're in a seasonal business, you'd say, you know, 90 or 50% of my income comes in in December. Well, what you're going to want to do is document that with last year's, you know, books. And then the underwriter's just going to take a look at it. And if you've got a consistency over two years, maybe three years, they'll sign off on it. Assets, this says your last three months bank statements, really it's your last two months bank statements. And what we're looking for is any large deposits. What's a large deposit? Anything nowadays, $250, $300, whatever it is. Um, the underwriter could condition to find out what that's for. So if you do make any deposits in the last two months, make sure that you're, you know, it's just, uh, don't do ATM deposits, do them at the bank so they scan them and we've got an image of them and be prepared to explain them. And what they're looking for is non-occupying interested parties that are making deposit deposits into your account so you can buy a property. So more than anything, straw buyers. So that's what that's about. Um, this is kind of cool. So credit score overview. Basically, you know, it's a you know, record of your payment history. Credit scores are between 350 to 850. Never seen anybody at 350, and I've never seen anybody at 850. Standard is about a 720. Um, anything about a, above a 740 is really considered perfect. Um, what's, what determines your credit score? This is good information. 35% is your payment history. Now, this focuses pretty much on the last two years. That's going to be key. 30% um, is the amount that you owe. This is kind of a, a cool part. Let's say you've got a credit card and you've got a $10,000 high limit and you owe $8,000 on it. They're going to ding you. It's going to mess up your FICO score. If you've got a $20,000 credit limit and you owe $8,000, it's not going to have that big of a negative impact. So you always want to keep your balances at 50% or less. 40% is usually good. 15% is uh, you know, credit history. 10% is type of credit used. What this is is they want a healthy balance between credit cards and installment loans. So really what you're looking for is probably two or three credit cards and an auto loan and a student loan. Um, new credit, they don't want to see that you're out shopping for cars, student loan or you know credit cards, things like that. Um, and then the documents that you're going to need, it's going to be your one month most recent pay stub. It's for the last 30 days or a year to date profit and loss statement. It's going to be your bank statements for the last two months, all pages. And not like ledgers, it has to be the actual bank statements. So a lot of people do online banking nowadays. What you're going to do is find the e-statement, click that PDF button and save it. it. Seems simple, but time and time again it comes up, people don't get it. Um, and we're looking to document any large deposits again. Last two years, W-2s, 1099s, any award letters from pensions. 
Last two years, federal tax returns, all pages, all schedules. If you have a, a corporation, S Corp, C Corp, whatever, your corp, corporate tax returns, all pages, all schedules, and any K-1s. And then, of course, a copy of a photo ID. And uh, it goes on to Q&A if you have any questions. Um, inside the, the bags that we didn't give to you, but we'll give to you, <laughs> it, has, it has all the slides from this. And it, it also has a cover letter with some of the different loan pro programs that we offer, whether it's VA, FHA, Jumbo. Um, there's a lot of niche programs out there too. So if you guys have any friends or family members who are VA or CalSTRS, meaning they work for a school district or they're a teacher, a janitor that works for a school district or anybody involved with a you know, CalSTRS or CalPERS program. All right.